Gun shop employees of Reddit. What are some red flags that have caused you to deny a sale of a firearm? Serious. Used to work at a gun store in California. Had this guy come and attempt to buy an AR. On the ATF form 4473, there's a question asking something like, have you ever been convicted of a misdemeanor of domestic violence? Person mark yes to this question. So I'm really put off because it's pretty obvious that column of questions must all be answered no. So I asked him if he marked that on accident and he told me no. That he had in fact been convicted of domestic violence. Told him sorry I couldn't sell him the gun and to have a good day. Comes back a week later with his wife. Points to the same AR on the shelf. And says that's the one he wants. His wife comes up and says she liked that to buy that AR. My co-workers and I witnessed the whole thing and they knew about my experience the week before so we told them that was illegal and said we couldn't sell either of them a gun. The wife refused to take our declination and got mad that we wouldn't sell it to her. We made it crystal clear to her that if she bought that gun for him after openly admitting it to us that it was for him. She would be committing a felony. She did not care and wanted to proceed. We told them to leave or we would call the police and have them deal with it. They left. I frequent my friend's gun store where he works, either using their range or buying whatever. It's in a ritty town so there's been a few issues I've witnessed. You get the usual scruffy tweakers and wannabe gangbangers. One wannabe hard guy came in with a ducking entourage of morons. He started asking to see this and that. He crossed the muzzle over my buddy and his boss multiple times as well as customers. They were asked to leave as they were being unsafe and his friends were being loud as hell. Cussing. Dropping the n-bomb. Half these tools were white. Soak the retard mantra of responding to things too difficult to understand with threats of violence. Imar coma back and ducking kill you itches. Throwing up gang signs and it. They shut the duck up right quick with multiple guns drawn on them. The police came and arrested two of them because they had outstanding warrants. Moral of the story. Don't act hard when really you're made of jello. Itch flavored jello. Instructor for a hole in the wall joint here. Saw a dude's probation officer's business card in his wallet. Had a possibly homeless woman ask for a little gun not like to kill anybody, but just to teach them a lesson. I have an FFL and have worked many gun shows as well as a couple of small stores. Both before I had my FFL and after. 99.99% .99 of the time. The biggest red flag is body language. How the person acts and how they carry themselves. It is easy to spot many heavy drug users. Especially meth users and they are always denied. I was working at a small gun shop and had a young guy, maybe 22 or 23, asking about a pistol. Something felt off but nothing that immediately set off a red flag. He asked to see a Caltech 9mm and when I handed him the pistol he immediately pointed it at me and pulled the trigger. When it went click he said too bad it was not loaded not only did I not sell to him. The person behind him was an off duty cop. I learned that when a customer does that it is still considered assault with a deadly weapon. LOL. I work at Field and Stream and have sold firearms for a collective 2 years now. I had one guy who came in all strung out. He was looking for a pistol gripped shotgun to take care of some business. I took it upon myself to see what this business was. He then tells me that he has to take care of his girlfriend's husband because he owned him drug money. All he offered for ID was a twit card. That was an easy turn down. But he didn't end up being too happy about it. Another guy I had come in on Black Friday wanting to buy a Ruger LCP for his wife. Well, nothing illegal there because if you are under the same household then it isn't technically a straw sale. Anyways, the guy wanted the LCP and handed me a Florida driver's license. I'm in Alabama so I can't transfer a handgun across state lines. Two hours later, a male walked in and said that he was told by his friend that you can't transfer handguns across state lines so he wanted to purchase it himself. Well, that's not the wife he said he was buying for, nor was it anyone related to him. Insta straw sale and shut him down. A previous guy came in and started screaming at me. They left with our security guy pushing them out. I worked at a larger sporting goods store, so when I came in for my shift, I had to finish this old guy's paperwork. He starts telling me about the gun, and how he can't wait to shoot it, so I'll look at the paperwork. And the woman applied to buy the gun. Big red flag. 
and he told me that his wife was filling out the paperwork. He told me it doesn't matter who signs for the paperwork. Huge red flag. So I talked to my manager about cancelling the sale. Then the guy stormed off super pissed. But they said he'll probably do it again at another store. There was a guy that came into the shop I worked and after filling out the paperwork my co-worker started rattling off some questions. Are you buying this for yourself? ETC ETC. One of the questions asked if the purchaser is a fugitive from the law. And the guy says yes. So my co-worker repeats the question and he says yes again. My co-worker says so you're a fugitive? And he goes yeah. Why do you think I'm buying the gun? Co-worker says you know I can't sell you this right? And he goes oh. Well then can I leave? Before anyone could say anything else an off-duty cop pulled out some cuffs and goes no you cannot. I've turned away people for drugs alcohol. Just being kind of a weird guy. On Christmas Eve while running the range portion of our facility a guy came up and asked to rent a rifle and asked if he could purchase a single bullet because he didn't need the others. Turned him away for that. I was helping a friend work a gun show. Friend is an FFL. This guy was walking around the show. And he had that aura of shifty. It wasn't any single thing. It was the way he walked. The way he was dressed. Just a whole number of things. But still. I told myself not to prejudge. He walked up to our table. Saw a gun he liked. And asked about the price. I told him how much it was. Then he asked if we would do a private sale. He was effectively asking us to waive the background check. I simply said. No. That solidified my initial judgement of him. So I told the other guys in the booth about him. In case he came back and tried to talk his way into a sale. The FFL told me that instead of simply saying no. I should have said. Why? Are you a felon? I work at a gun range as an RSO for the FWC and while we don't sell firearms the only two people I've ever had to turn away were. 1. Guy wanted to rent a shotgun. So is it okay if I have multiple felonies? 2. Guy wanted to rent a shotgun. Okay sure just need an ID. He hands me a women's ID. Um sir this isn't your ID. And? UHH sir I need your ID on file until you're finished renting. You don't need my ID. Well. Then I can't let you rent a shotgun. What? That's stupid. You can't have my ID I'm not letting you look at it. Okay. Storms out. They're pretty confident he either had felonies or was planning to steal the gun with a fake ID. FFL here. I had a lady come get a Glock 40 she had transferred into my shop. It was a Hippoint.380. A quick convo found out it's for her boyfriend who's in the car and can't own a gun BC he's a felon. ATF HQ for our city is 2 miles away. I told her I had to check something in the back and called them. They got there real quick. Worked at a pawn shop for a few months this past summer. I had a gentleman ask to see a gun. Our policy was to take their ID and give it back when they're done. I asked for his ID and he said he didn't have one. So the manager said to get his car keys. Which he had. Even though he didn't have a license. Anyways. I give him the gun and he said that he was surprised by how heavy it was. And that in his home country he could never have held a gun. Then he asked if this gun was used to kill someone could the police tell what gun was used. I told him yes and immediately took the gun back. I never showed anyone guns after that. Edit. Words. Anytime they open up with hey do you guys do background checks here? I worked at a pawn shop that sold guns. Had a clearly angry man come in one day asking to buy a gun. Okay. Sir. What are you looking to get? If we don't have it. I can probably order it. He responded with I don't care. Anything. Nope. You aren't getting it buddy. He threatened to call the cops. I told him to go ahead and he left. Very relevant. At work we have the gunsmith excuse. This happens when a customer shows up to pick up a gun that I have fixed or customized and I then overhear the manager telling them that I was incorrect. The gun is not done yet. But it will be done tomorrow. It usually means they're too drunk or high to take a gun home. It's his way of avoiding conflict. We also have to turn away young adults who are retail customers who have so recently smoked dope that we can get a good contact high off of them. This comes up a few times a month. This has been a good read, considering yesterday was my first day on the job selling firearms at a store. 
I don't work at one but was told a story by an employee of a gun store while my friend was picking up some mags for his AR. Apparently some dumbass actually came in to buy a rifle, provided all of his information legitimately, and while the employee called the sheriff's office he was informed that the potential buyer had a warrant out for robbery. He had to act like he was going through the usual process and keep the guy in the store while a few cops were on their way to arrest him. Criminals are ducking stupid. Trying to buy it for someone else. It's fine when it's a gift. But it's obvious when it's a straw purchase when they are telling them they'll pay them the extra money over what they already gave them. Sorry, man. Can't do it. I've only refused a few. But I live and work in a rural area where most everybody knows each other and have purchased a firearm before. A couple sales that looked like a straw purchase to me. One college aged guy that reeked of pot are the only ones that come to mind. I've told a few people that I could not work on their firearms because of a lack of time and the volume of work I had. When in actuality I did not want my name associated in any way with them. I used to work sporting goods at Walmart. Did it for about 5 years. A few I remember. Denied a guy ammo because just before he came to the counter he and his girlfriend wife were yelling at each other a few hours over and I overheard it. He was still angry when approaching the counter. I told him I overheard them fighting and that he was not in the right state of mind to be purchasing 9mm hollow points. He screamed at me for about 5 minutes until a manager arrived and the manager backed me up. If someone denies a sale, nobody can override it on the other side of the coin. Unfortunately, I sold a Morse big 520 gauge to a guy. It was March and here in my state turkey season starts in April. So nothing unusual to be selling a shotgun at that time of the year. He knew exactly what he wanted. Knew what shot shells he wanted. Said he was gearing up for season. Bought a turkey call and a decoy. He was approved by FBI Nix and I completed the sale. Fast forward to about 2 months later. A state trooper came in and asked to speak to me. Asked me if the guy seemed out of sorts or anything. Which I said no. He then informs me the guy killed his father with the shotgun. After some time I realized there's nothing I could have done and that these background checks simply don't do anything. There was no way I could have done anything differently to change the outcome with the scenario that was given to me. Still a shame though. My girlfriend's dad owns a gun store and just told me some guy came in just today to kill his neighbor's cat and all of the kittens. Needless to say he was kicked out. Anything that would lead me to believe it was a straw purchase was the most common. The most satisfying one was a very out of shape guy came in to buy a handgun and started loudly claiming to be former special forces and that he had been wounded in Baghdad. Being a recently separated veteran my bullet senses started going off immediately and I began to ask him more and more questions and it was obvious he was lying. So I told him I thought he was full of it. And as soon as I did another customer in the store slammed his VA card down on the counter next to him and yelled I've been listening to him egg you on for 10 minutes trying not to laugh. If you're a wounded veteran where's your VA card? The man started to choke on his words and I ripped his background form up in front of him and told him we wouldn't be selling him the handgun haha. A guy was trying to trade me about 2k worth of gun and scope for my $500 AK-47. I was about to do the deal. But my spidey sense was tingling. So I did a quick google search on the name associated with the email address. Sure enough. It pulls up a twitter feed of Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris pictures and memes. I politely turned down the sale. Oh another one. There was a couple at the counter checking out 1911s. So what does he need to pick up a gun? He will need a FSC. A driver's license. A second proof of residency. The guy speaks to her in Spanish. This was my red flag. He wouldn't speak to me. He would always talk to his girlfriend and she would translate. I pick up a bit of it and over here I should buy it today and no green card. So that's all he needs? Yeah. But I don't mean to be out of line. Does he have a green card? No he just has a driver license. Is that okay? I'm sorry. He needs to be legal in order to buy a gun. They were more understanding than I thought. So I am an international arms dealer. Childhood me still love saying that. But I just have a FFL1 stroke 8 and SOT1. Mainly I just deal with importing ammunition and specialty weapons. First, I don't have a storefront. I have a warehouse. 
but the ATF requires you to be put in a database where any Joe Schmo can contact you. Also Gunbroker refuses to take me off of their site. So people find out about my importer exporter status and ask if I can help get large amounts of ammo and ARs AKs blocks M107S into war zones Palestine Mexico. The biggest red flag for me is someone calling emailing me and asking for a Glock or Barrett 50 cal. It's Barrett. Most of my customers usually have model numbers. Not generic slang terms. I had one dumbass call me up and try to order 3 Barrett 50s with as much ammo as I can get. You want dollar sign 20,000 in rifles and don't even know a model number? Sure. Come on down. Our friendly neighborhood ATF agent would love to talk with you. Wasn't working at the store at the time. But here goes. Two individuals came into the store and requested to see the cheapest handguns the store had in stock. The salesperson was showing them the lower priced handguns and the customers were picking pistol after pistol. Based on cost, if it was around $400 they wanted it. The owner was listening to the conversation and was suspicious of these two individuals. Eventually the owner goes into the back to call the ATF after giving the salesperson the signal to slow everything down. The owner called the local ATF field office and they say they don't have the ability to make it down in time and ask the owner to call the police to handle it. Owner calls a local detective who frequents the place and informed him of the situation of the detective says slow the sale down. I'll call you when I am in the parking lot. But allow the sale to go through. The detective calls 5 minutes later and tells them he is in the parking lot with a few marked cars and let the sale complete and exit the business. Once in the parking lot the officers question them, find a bunch of other new handguns in their car and arrest them. A few days later the ATF comes in to get copies of the federal documents they filled out. They tell the owner the two individuals were going through the state buying as many pistols as possible with the intent of bringing them to NJ to be put on a shipping container headed for Somalia. The agent said the funds used to purchase the firearms are legal so he can keep it as the guns were evidence now. I was at the counter when a gentleman asked to see a Ruger. 357. I took it from its case opened it up and set it on the counter. The man proceeded to pick it up. Looking the gun over. Out of the corner of my eye I noticed the man had started loading the gun. Before I had even realized it I was over the counter. I had managed to get my thumb in the way so he couldn't close the revolver. Another customer finally caught on to what was going on and helped me wrestle the man to the ground. Needless to say. I didn't sell him a gun. I'm fact I quit that day.